And so in this video, I'm going to tell you everything we know about this comet so far, what happens next, and how we could take advantage of other interstellar objects in the future to learn about other star systems. I'm going to reference the actual astronomers who have been making the observations, the telescopes that they use, the methods that they gathered their information, and we're going to put links to every single one of the papers in the show notes down below so that you can follow and do your own research to learn more. And of course, we're going to address the elephant in the room, the paper by Abby Loeb, the controversy on here on YouTube that people are making claims that it's an alien spacecraft. You know, it's something that I can't ignore. If you just want to hear about that, you can just go to that chapter in this video and watch that now. Otherwise, stick around for the science and all of the papers that have come out. So then we had a series of telescopes from around the world and in space turning to gaze at this new interstellar object. For example, the 10.4 meter Grand Telescope on the Canary Islands. In a paper published by Art de la Fuente Marcos and others, they found that it is much redder than other interstellar objects. It's much more similar to a D-type asteroid than a Kuiper Belt object. And they were able to calculate its rotation period at 16.79 hours. And they concluded that it had similar chemical composition to objects that come from beyond the asteroid belt, but not all the way out into the Kuiper belt, which we'll get into in a bit. So think of like Phobos with a more reddish color and a very low albedo. And we actually have a meteorite here on Earth that had a very similar composition to what they were seeing, the Tagish Lake meteorite, which fell near the turn of the century in Canada. And then on August 4th, the Hubble Space Telescope was turned to look at 3I Atlas. In a paper from David Jewett and others, they were looking at the comet when it was at 3.8 astronomical units away from its perihelion or its closest point to the sun. And they were able to observe the coma around the nucleus of the comet and calculate that it was losing between 12 and 120 kilograms per second of material sublimating off of its surface. But one of the strangest observations was that it had an anti tail, a tail of material that was pointing towards the sun. And this is a bit of a mystery, but there are some explanations for what this could be. When the comet is that far up from the sun, it's starting to get heated up by the sun's radiation, but it's too far away for the solar wind to really impact it. On August 25th, Martin Cordiner and others gave their findings with Webb, and it revealed a carbon dioxide dominated coma with a ratio of carbon dioxide to water of 7.6 to 1. 